Every minute of every day, your life is passing you by. All our lives are passing us by, and there's not a thing we can do about it. Minute by minute, second by second, we are all racing towards our own inevitable mortality. It's a scary thought, and one that we often go great lengths to avoid confronting. But on the fourth track of Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd looked this thought dead in the eye. Digging away the moments that make up a dull day. Of all the struggles that Pink Floyd talk about throughout Dark Side of the Moon, time is the most universal. No matter who you are, no matter where you Pretty live, no matter how rich or how poor you are, Same, you'll always have to face time. And try as we may, Can none of us will ever truly be able to preserve a beautiful moment in time. No matter what we do, the seconds will keep on ticking. What we can do is try to make the best of what we're given. Try to cherish those beautiful moments before they're washed away like so many grains of sand. And that's the message that Pink Floyd sing on time. Before we get into that message though, we open with the most jarring moment on all of Dark Side of the Moon. The clocks. The clocks. This cacophony of clocks pulls you out of the dazed panic of On The Run and into clear awareness, while also laying out the main theme of the song. Like most of the sound collages on Dark Side of the Moon, this assortment of clocks was assembled by Alan Parsons. He didn't originally put them together for Dark Side of the Moon, but rather for another release he had planned to show off what the new technologies of quadraphonic sound could do. But then he heard Pink Floyd working on time. He thought the sound collage would fit perfectly with the song, so he dug up his recordings and offered them to the band. And they did work perfectly, waking you from the implied death at the end of On The Run. Once the bells die out, we find ourselves in a spacey intro propelled by a Nick Mason Rototom solo. Gone. Thanks to that solo, Mason got a writing credit on the song, making it the only song on all of Dark Side of the Moon that features all four members as songwriters. Yeah. As Mason solos, okay. the rest of the band Pretty lays nice. down imposing atmosphere. Then we break into the first verse. Here we're met with an all too familiar scene for many of us. A bored youth wasting time in a small town. Waiting for someone or something to show. When you're young, time seems to be the last concern in the world. You've got so much time that you're trying to find ways to waste it. You drive around with your buddies making mischief. You lay around in the sun. You fill your days with nothingness as you wait for real life to begin. But all of that changes, and the changes come at you fast. Roger Waters talked about this experience in an interview with Mojo. I had the strangest feeling growing up, and I know a lot of people share this, that childhood and adolescence and one's early adult life are preparing for something that's going to happen later. I suddenly thought at 29, hang on, it's happening. It has been right from the beginning. And there isn't suddenly a line when the training stops and life starts. At the end of the first verse, Richard Wright sings that feeling in one of the most heartbreakingly human and real moments of the entire album. From there we jump into a passionate guitar solo by David yes. Gilmour. This Let's is David. typical song structure Let's for rock. David. Usually solos form the bridge of a song, pushing the momentum towards a finale. But here Gilmour's passion cuts right through the center of the song. In playing with structure like this, Pink Floyd's music amplifies the anxiety of the lyrics. The solo comes at you fast, sooner yes. than expected, just as life does. And the solo itself is remarkable. We can really look at it in two sections. The first is a desperate section that runs about a minute. In this first part, Gilmore captures the pained anxiety of watching your life pass before your eyes. Then a warm chorus of backup singers flood your ear. Musically, it's the same as Richard Wright's vocal passages in the song. It's a melancholic acceptance of the inevitability of time. This melancholy is only a brief break though, as we launch back into desperation. He's about to take off. 
take off. This verse is one of many parallels that reveal themselves throughout Dark Side of the Moon. Gilmore's singing here echoes the end of the first verse, which was sung by Wright. Both feature images of sunshine and the metaphor of life as running a race. Here though, the race has started and you already find yourself desperately running to catch up, desperately running to find your life. It's the same sunshine that you laid in when you were younger, but its meaning is different. Each time the sun sinks behind the horizon, it marks another day passing. It marks your life ticking away. Wright's half of the second verse is the opposite of Gilmore's section in the first verse. Where Gilmore sings about wasting time, Wright sings about not being able to find time. He sings of the national spirit of England, how it feels as though everyone is in the same boat, trying desperately to get a grasp of their own life, trying to catch up to time. The background vocals was really what makes this part of it. The lyrics are nice, but the background The verse ends with the break of the fourth wall. Wright announces that the song is over, but there's no real resolution, no chorus, no final solo. Just like it just is. ends. The time is gone. So it goes. The song is over. It's just over. It's just life. Once again, the music is reflecting the anxieties present in the lyrics. We don't get any answers to the questions it's asked. We don't get a catharsis. And so it is when you reach the end of your life. You thought you'd have more to say, more to do. We all want to be a part of something big or profound, but in the end we spend so much of our lives wasting time or chasing time. While the song Time ends on this thought, the recording itself has another piece of music stapled to the end, a reprise of Breathe. God, Tying back to the birth we saw two tracks ago, this yes. verse of Breathe talks of aging and returning home to a place of comfort. Home, home again. It's a rest after the tension and stress that have dominated the last two songs. I literally it's not was, all comfort. That's the first time that's how I was listening to it. song brings in another image. It literally looked the like this. of a bell. Like that, I like that image that you keep showing in the rain in your video because I swear to Jesus Christ himself, <laughs> I literally had smoked a doobie. I was just freshly separated from my wife. It was raining outside and I was sitting in front of the computer trying to figure out what the fuck I'm about to do next. Because <laughs> I couldn't believe that it was actually like we really was separated for real now. Like we was kind of living with each other, but not with each other. We was, it was kind of over for a good month and a half before that. I just put it together later on. I didn't notice it at the time. Later on, we was already kind of done. But when we actually separated, separated, I had just started the Fish Out of Water series. I had just started it. Frank, I had a a, a a subscriber named Frank. He he doesn't. I, I can't find him in the note anymore. I don't know if he changed his comments. I don't know. But shout out Frank. He made me create this whole little series. But he he wanted me to do Metallica. I forgot who's the person that told me to do Dark Side of the Moon. I I can't remember the name. But, like I said, I was just sitting down, it was raining, and I'm just staring out the window, and I'm letting that shit play, and I'm just really zoned out into the music, like, it really just was, like, it really took my mind off of all that super stressful shit, because they was talking about the shit that was on my mind at the time, like, everything they talked about on Dark Side of the Moon was going on in my brain and I was stressing about it and that was like my stress reliever I'm gonna shut up now let's get to it Far away. that bell is an announcement that we're gonna keep following the rabbit hole down deeper into the core of humanity the tolling bell calls back to the ringing clocks at the beginning 
Yep. But it also suggests a funeral. It's the shadow of mortality that hangs over all of keys Dark Side too, of the, the Moon. Keys too. And death comes hand in hand keys with a new spooky. discussion. Spirituality, religion, and the afterlife. All of these topics will be explored in the next song as we push towards the end of Side A. <laughs> Oh, when I made great, this video, it was uh, a different world. The great gig if your life sky. is anything oh like mine gosh. right now, you're probably finding yourself stuck at home looking for ways to pass the time. And something I've been doing is catching- I might do his video on the great gig in the sky. I'm gonna do the whole series, actually, cause, but I want to do that song first because this song kind of, just like he said, when- the bell started ringing and woke me up because I was so zoned into the album. It was crazy. Right? I was like, what the fuck am I? I didn't realize where I was. It kind of like it literally made, it was like escapism. I would cut this album on and just like that after that day, I'm staring outside and it's just pouring down raining and I'm sad as fuck. The dark side of the moon was was like my therapy almost.